welcome to Shadow of Truth, and today is Monday, December the 19th, 2016, and your hosts are Rory Hall from thedailycoin.org and Dave Kranzler from investmentresearchdynamics.com. What's going on, Dave? Not a lot, just trying to dig out from the snow and the cold. And uh, I'm, I'm still looking for a source of fake news that told me the Broncos won yesterday, but I can't find it. <laughs> oh, they won. You didn't hear it. <laughs> well, if they could report it on CNN, then I'd believe it. <laughs> oh, well, you just keep looking because I'm sure they've got it. <laughs> no, it's the Russians. They've got it. <laughs> It's the Russians' fault Denver lost yesterday. Let's see. Let's see how that works. <laughs> they hacked the game plan and gave it to Belichick. <laughs> oh, 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 my goodness. Well, let's jump in and make something happen. <laughs> let's get it on. Everything just keeps repeating, and the, the nightmare grows worse every day with this, you know, the, the fake news stuff, the... You know, blaming the election, blaming the, the, the WikiLeaks emails on the Russians, which is total BS. They don't have any proof. There's no proof. That's what? why that's why the CIA, you know, that's why they wouldn't meet with the with the um, electoral college electors before they before today, before they do their thing today, because they don't have any evidence. I have no evidence. And I love the fact that the Kremlin and Putin came out and said, listen. We're sick of it. Either produce some evidence or shut up. Right. They don't have evidence. The, there was a, um, a high-level NSA whistleblower official who came out, I think over the weekend, who said uh, <laughs> the WikiLeaks leaks came from the inside over here. <laughs> right. Yeah, which that's that's been – there's been other people to say that as well. I mean – but now that if the NSA, I missed that, but if the NSA, somebody from within that organization said, did in fact say something to that effect, then come on. I mean, give it a break. Right. Anybody with a brain knows that it, that Russia has nothing to do with it. Right. But see, the problem is, it's like when you flip through all the mainstream media news channels, they're all talking about it as if, you know, Russia did it. And then that all of a sudden becomes the, the narrative out there in the public. And I don't I don't really know what the public necessarily believes or not anymore. I have a feeling that a lot more people kind of get it, quote unquote, it. And that's part of the that's, that's part of the dynamic that that basically gave Trump the White House. Yes. Um, but again, it's, it's you know, you create this boogeyman called Russia and you create fear. Oh, no, big bad Russia. <laughs> and and I, so I don't, and, and that's all the mainstream media just, it hammers with you. You turn on, I bet you if you turn on CNN right now, they're talking about Russian hacking. And, More than likely. Yeah, and yet no one comes up with proof. Yes, yeah. there's zero evidence that's been presented you know, I mean, and it goes all the way back to uh, Hillary during the debate saying, well, there's 17 agencies that have confirmed Russian hacking. Okay, just produce one with some evidence. If there's yeah, 17, say, then somebody's got something. Right. She would, she would deflect a hard question. <laughs> By saying, well, you know, it's just go to my website. We're, we're fact checking on my website. Yeah, well, why would we believe your website any more than we would believe anyone else's website? Right. You have the magic fact checking website? <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. HillaryClinton.com or WikiLeaks.com. Hmm. Which one am I going to believe? <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, my goodness. You know, and, and and it ties into all of these lies, these continual lies and the fake news. And now it's spilled over into the House passing a resolution stating that what you do and what I do are criminal. And it, it just, 
it disgusts me beyond beyond words. The fact that telling the truth now is a criminal act, while the federal government is allowed by law to perpetrate propaganda just like what they're doing. That's perfectly legal. Dissent, not so much. Well, it's, it's again, it's it just sort of, it's, it's, it's the heart of what Orwell was writing about, where, you know, war is peace and, and lies are truth. Ignorance and is strength. It, it, it's like it's like everything's been turned inside out. Yep. And now and now they're like you said, you're referencing the laws passed by. Well, they weren't laws; they're bills passed by the House and the Senate. And it'll yes. it's going to turn into a law, and it's it's um, it's it's a slippery slope down toward complete censorship of the internet. And I do think they realize that that at least a majority of the country has caught on to this 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 game they're playing with the mainstream media and 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 disseminating their their propaganda through the, the mainstream media and I think they they realize there's a battle right now that they, they they've been losing to the alternative media where you, you can go out there and at least there's a lot of crap in the alternative media too I mean yeah. you know I guess we call it fear porn but there's also a lot of people out there trying to find the truth and present the truth and and um, I, I guess what what kind of blows my mind in this whole thing, it's like they're just they throw these phrases out there, Russian hacking, Russia hacked the election. And I, you know, I was on if he, it doesn't matter which which side of the political spectrum, if you go to CNN or you go to Fox, Russia hacks the election. You know, it's like, really? Right. <laughs> And, and it's it, the bottom line is, and I, I mean this. I thought this the first time I saw Hillary bring it up in the debate. Well, let me see here. Does it really matter who presented the truth if if the WikiLeaks emails are presenting the truth? Does it really matter what the source is? Isn't it more important to get the truth out there, or do you want to just have your supporters continuing believing your lies? And, that and that, crime to is me, okay. that's the absurdity of the whole thing. Yes. I mean, and it's just, and that gets lost. That gets lost in the propaganda, the fear porn, you know, the, 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 again, you create this, this aura of the boogeyman in, in Russia, right? Big bad Russia, you know? And as it turns out, well, let's see who's really big and who's really bad. Who's, who has their borders surrounded by NATO missiles? <laughs> right. You know, and, and who's who's semi isolated from the eastern hemisphere with absolutely no threat on their borders. <laughs> no exactly. no military threat on their borders anyway. And and the other the other part is that it it's a it's a distraction. It it allows everybody, including you and I, to avoid discussing the crimes against humanity on a different level that have just come to light with Deutsche Bank and the gold and silver market rigging and the absolute conspiracy by these big banks to suppress gold and silver. Why is that a crime against humanity? Because it is real money. It's what controls the Forex, the fiat currency, period. It is if it's if it doesn't, if gold doesn't play a part, then why do the central banks have it? And explain to me why there is this massive divergence on the Shanghai physical futures market versus the LBMA COMEX paper contract. I mean that thing just continues to grow. That divergence, the backwardation, premium, whatever you want to call it, is steadily climbing. Every day last week, it was bumping $30 an ounce on gold and $2 an ounce on silver. And then Friday, it breached $30. And this is according to Harvey Oregon. And you published it. You, posted a piece of that I did uh, where did the system collapse.com 
was reporting a $50, almost $60 an ounce difference in the physical versus the paper. I mean, is that the real distraction of what all this rushing and hacking is about? Because it seems like that's about to take over. If it doesn't, then something is very, very wrong. Because if I was a gold miner, gold producer, why in the world would I leave 55 to $60 an ounce on the table when I don't have to? Why would I do that? Doesn't make sense. Well, there's issues there with, with currency conversions and things like that. So you are at risk for that if you, if you go and you sell your gold. And actually, I'm not sure how that would work because China is very strict about how gold goes in and out of its country. So I, I don't know if I don't know if producers can necessarily directly sell. See, and that's the other thing. <clears throat> I think what would what could be going on is, is producers are selling their gold to Swiss refiners who then refine it into the kilo bars that they prefer in China. And I have no doubt that that's going on. Um, you know, again, I don't. I, I I pay more attention to what goes on in the in the Eastern Hemisphere markets, which I you know I get data on it every day from John Brimlow. For instance, today, this morning, he in his early morning report, he's reporting that the premium in Vietnam was 138 ounces above world gold, and that's. I've seen it higher in Vietnam, but only in times when there's been like extreme physical stress on the physical market in terms of supply. So, I mean, this, this is telling us that there's either a scarcity of physical gold going into Vietnam or there is just a voracious appetite of demand for gold over there. And I think it's probably more the latter, although there, it, there's also been some reports that have said that there's there's, you know, some supply restrictions going into China. I don't know if I believe that or not, because there's, there's, again, it's like the Russian hacking thing. Show me the proof. I mean, the only thing we can look at is, is what the reported published premiums are to determine, you know, what the market looks like. And with premiums this high in the Eastern Hemisphere, I mean, even with all the trouble going on in India, you know, with the, with the crackdown on cash, et cetera, um, India has been reporting premiums, import premiums for the last several weeks, which tells you that there is gold going in there and people are buying it. Yep. Um, now you said 138 ounces, I presume you mean $138. $138 to world gold. Yeah, okay. that's the premium in Vietnam. That's, and that's hefty. Just to put this in context, probably, you know, over the summer, that premium was under twenty dollars. Wow. Yeah. It's almost seven times. Right. So, um, and we're seeing, you know, same thing in Turkey. I don't think he had, he didn't report on Turkey today. He doesn't always report on Turkey because I don't know that data is always available. But Turkey is also a very large um, gold consumer. Now, I, did I dream or hallucinate that gold was going for twenty two hundred an ounce in India, or what? It, what is uh, Brimlow reporting on that? As far as what gold is actually going for? I won't get the India data until later later this morning. Okay. So um, I, I don't. I don't. I think I don't know where that twenty two hundred dollar an ounce is coming from. That, uh, like I, I said, I may have dreamed it or hallucinated. There's there's really no telling. <laughs> yeah, I'd say it's probably hallucination or dream. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think that there is a correlation between all this focus on the fake news and what's actually happening with the gold market? I mean, do you think that that's some type of uh, distraction for that? Or is it more of a distraction for what's happening in Syria and Libya and Qatar and Yemen and Ukraine? Everywhere else, we're blowing people up. Well, I don't think it's specifically pointed at the gold market, but it certainly serves that purpose. I think I think the, f the fake news, the propaganda, the the you know the 
trying to create fear over, you know, about Russia. Um, I, I think it's all just a distraction in general away from everything that's going on. All of the above that you mentioned, plus um, the fact that, you know, the U.S. economy is going down the toilet. I mean, you know, I, I put together data for my short seller journal report every week. And it's, you know, the data that I dig up, most of it doesn't make its way into the mainstream media. I mean, you can find it in the alternative media or, or actually from, you know, companies themselves. And, um, I mean, it, it's, uh, the economy is, is slipping away quickly. And that's what was so funny about the Fed nudging up interest rates, 25 basis points. I think the only reason they did that is because we knew from the notes in the previous meeting that they were worried about their, their credibility if they didn't bump up rates. They have no credibility. Right. Well, I mean, they'd even have less. They'd have negative credibility if, <laughs> if they, you like know, and ironically, <laughs> they're, they're bumping up rates, you know, right as the economy's heading into the belly of the whale. Um, uh, you know, the, the, the retail sales number that was reported last night, it was a 0.1% gain over October, but um, most of the major categories for which they, you know, for, you know, like uh, uh, retail food services, motor vehicle parts and dealers, furniture, those are among the bit electronics. If you go to the actual retail sales report, the, the data, there's asterisks for the month of November, which is what the estimates were for. And then you go and you see what the asterisk means and it says, well, you know, actual estimates weren't, a, data wasn't available to make estimates. So what they do is they go and they, they, um, make it up. They, they Well, <laughs> essentially make it up. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so the fact that they reported a 0.1% gain for November, first of all, that in and of itself is horrific because yes. that's just inflation. Right. So that means on a real basis, inflation adjusted basis, sales declined in November from October. But the point being is that I'm sure that that estimate was geared to at least showing a slight gain. So that that's what the headline could say. But um, I also found some research from a company called Count and Company. And um, for the month of November, their research showed that mall traffic was down. 6.4 percent versus October for wow. the month of November. So there's no way that retail sales were, were positive in November versus October. No. And then um, through December 14th, month to date, mall traffic was down 9.9 percent, so almost 10 percent for this for versus the same period in November. Wow. I know. I was actually even shocked by those numbers. That's incredible. Yeah. And here's the thing. Well, then, well, what the fake news would say, oh, well, everyone's shopping online now. Well, no, that's not true because, first of all, um, online sales as a percentage of total retail sales is slightly under 8% right now. And so even if our more people are shopping online, that's not enough to offset the decline in foot traffic at shopping malls. You know, yeah, there is some cannibalization of of mall traffic from you know people going online, but it's 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 not. You know, I think the, the financial media makes a bigger deal out of online sales than really should be made um, because it's 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 still such a small percentage of overall retail sales. Yeah, and it, it's still retail sales. I mean, whether it's online or brick and mortar. Hello. Right. I mean, and Walmart other, is selling what Walmart is selling, you know, and all the retailers right down the line. doesn't matter how they got in the door, not in my opinion. Right. And then I found another article. It was actually sourced out of the Wall Street Journal, and it talked about how um, the, the, the discounts this year are even deeper than they were last year. Wow. And that's despite the fact that the retailers purposely tried to keep their inventories lower. Man, oh man. Um, and there was, I found a, a, a report from a data analysis company that analyzed $4 billion in transactions recently and found that promotional pricing had jumped 79% in November from November 2015. 
And for the first week of this December, promotional pricing was double last December. So, so, so they, can't, just, they can't even give it away. Right. I mean, the only reason that you're seeing discounts like this is because people aren't buying. They're broke. Right. Everybody's broke. Exactly. I mean, it's, it's unbelievable that our economy is in the condition that it's in while the cheerleaders on financial news TV talk about how great everything is. I mean, I'm not sure what they're looking at. But everything that I mean, they look at at housing. I mean, well, you, you've been paying a close four point six percent, Rory. Don't you know that? Wow. Well, <laughs> yeah. Okay. And, and I mean, how are they gonna? I think we're gonna see exactly the same movie that we saw in January of this year with this rate hike, the economy falling off a cliff. It's further over the edge this year than last year. The housing market is starting to roll over. All of that says that January is January second. The stock market going to open up, and they're not going to be able to control it uh, to the on the downside. Are they going to have to turn it, unplug the thing like they did last year? Go well, glitch. Sorry about that. Had to close <laughs> it down. You know. It's a good question. I, you know, it's valid questions. I actually started thinking about that last week. I wonder if, if we're going to start, you know, we'll see a repeat of, of, um, last January, this January. And, you know, again, I don't know because we don't know to what extent they've figured out how to control markets electronically. I will say that I think based on research that I was doing from the short seller journal this week, I think hedge funds are basically all in and they're the ones who have been chasing the market higher for the last two weeks because um, up until early December, the hedge funds were either short or in cash and because they didn't believe the rally. And then they had no choice but to jump in because they can't issue their year-end investor reports and show that they weren't exposed to the stock market. Yeah. Oh, and sorry about that. True. We're just sitting on a big pile of cash. <laughs> right. And they got to especially show their, their, their pension clients that they were in the stock market because pension funds are so starved for return. And I know from a friend of mine who works at a pension fund here in Denver that pension funds have maxed out their exposure to stocks, which in and of itself is quite frightening because at some point you are going to drop into the abyss on the stock market. And that's going to inflict a lot of damage on the pension system. Well, they already are. I mean, look at CalPERS right. and Dallas, and now uh, there was another, I think, Fort Worth. There was another Texas uh, pension fund that, that tanked uh, just within the past few days. And not this is to say nothing of what happened in Detroit, what's happening in Chicago. I mean, these things are, they're all a nightmare at this point. I mean, it, it's... If you've got money in the in a pension fund, I would strongly suggest taking a look at how to get it out of there because it ain't going to make it, not from what I'm reading. All right, Dave, you think we've given them enough to chew on for one day? Probably more than enough. <laughs> uh, well, I guess we'll pick it up on Thursday. And, yes. And that will be our last show for the year because I will be unavailable the week between Christmas and New Year's. As will I. There you go. So hope everybody has a great Christmas and a good New Year. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll talk to them Thursday. So Okay. That's right. <laughs> All right. Whether they want us to or not. <laughs> Whether they want us to or not. <laughs> you know, we're putting it out there. You don't have to listen. <laughs> if you don't like it, don't push play. Right. Just go ahead, go watch CNN. <laughs> or Fox. <laughs> or Fox, whichever you prefer. Uh, well, all right, brother. I guess we'll uh, pick it up on Thursday and take it from there. That sounds good.